Good afternoon and welcome to the four o'clock match between Andrew Samagia from Australia and Harvey Candler from the UK. He missed the group stages of the World Snooker Federation World Championship. Uh, my name is Peter Tankard and I'm joined in commentary by my uh, Irish Australian buddy. Dave Walsh, or Dahi Brunach in his uh, native tongue. Uh, welcome, Dave. Thanks, Peter. It's a pleasure to join you in the commentary box. For those of you who don't like commentary on snooker, especially our commentary, there is a mute button. Feel free to use it. We won't be at, at all heard. Uh, we're expecting this to be a fairly lopsided affair. Andrew is a regular club player in Sydney, uh, but Harvey Chandler has been on the Pro Tour and is trying to get his Pro Tour card back. So this could be a David and Goliath encounter. <coughs> but strange things happen, Dave. Strange things happen. Uh, certainly at club level and uh, state level, Andrew is a well-known player and uh, can certainly not be in breaks, but uh, I think uh, this might just be a bridge too far today. I spoke to Andrew before the match, <laughs> and, and, and frankly, that was what he was expecting. He was hoping not to embarrass himself. And, uh, but um, as I say, it's snooker, and um, the balls will determine who wins, not predictions. I think the key is, uh, especially at a an event like this where most of us are not expecting to win just uh, go out there give a good account of yourself and uh, ultimately just enjoy yourself yes yeah, somebody uh, made the observation that um, that the um, Australian players tend to be a bit older and I think that's probably true uh, the real growth areas for snooker and where all the young players coming from are, are in Asia these days and um, in, in Sydney and I'm told in the UK too that uh, there's there's not as many young players coming through. Is that right, Dave? Well, I think it's still quite strong in uh, countries like England and Wales, but there's a real dearth of talent uh, coming out of Ireland at the moment. Seems to be a lack of clubs. There's been a lot of closures the last few years. Um, a general lack of interest as far as a mainstream audience is concerned. Things like technology and computer games have just completely taken over. Well, it's a pity he actually played a, a, a good shot on that red into the middle pocket, came around with a little bit of a side to uh, sit nicely for the black. And uh, it's a pity for miscue on the, uh, on the second red. But it has left a big opening here for Harvey. Yes, there was a nice opening red there from Andrew along the cushion. It was looking promising. What? So stun up for these uh, two reds just below the black. Let's see how his control is. It looks like he's playing it off the cushion. Didn't have to do that, but uh, I think Ronnie might have stunned up for those. But uh, Harvey felt more comfortable going off the cushion. Nice. Well, I think he wants to get rid of this red below the pack before he um, works on the split. Good angle. So three reds, four reds if you count the one up in Borg. Open, he doesn't have Seven. to split the pack, doesn't have to take any risks to uh, put a reasonable contribution together. This uh, stream is being brought to you by Dan Lynch from Google TV. And uh, for those of you who uh, have seen these streams before, you might notice this a little different because it's, uh, it's using the uh, WSF template, so it's actually a WSF stream. Five. 
rather very good positive start from Harvey here. Yeah, he's 27 years of age, uh, so he's very much in his prime. Now, Dave, that looked like a three-leaf shamrock on his uh, waistcoat there. Correct me if I'm wrong. It does. Did you yeah, get a little excited when you saw that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's the wrong colour, so not not really. <laughs> we'll need to get to the bottom of that one, Peter. It could be moonlighting for Ireland. Perhaps you put in a bid. <laughs> and here you were thinking you were the only Irish representative. I know. I thought I was special with my golden harp. <laughs> it's like the only gay in the village. <laughs> Now this is an open event and that means that uh, anyone uh, can enter. Players are not representing their country. There is a national flag there but they're not playing on behalf of their country. And it's open to uh, both genders. In fact all genders. Uh, and all ages. So we have a number of juniors in this event, we have uh, a number of women in this event. In fact, probably more than there would have been, except for the fact that there were two uh, earlier events at this venue, on these tables, being the Asia Pacific Women's Championship and the WSF World Junior Championship. So there's a lot of hotshot young guys here. Liam Davis, Liam Pullen, Stan Moody, uh, Julian Boyko, lots of great young players. Would have liked a wet kiss on that red, but it's worked. He's opened them up. He's not messing around here. No, he's a quick player, isn't he? Very fluid. So he's an ex-professional, um, he was on the Pro Tour from 2018 to 2020 and uh, in 2018 he won the BBSA European Snooker Championship in Bulgaria, Kay. defeated uh, Jordan Brown 7 frames to 2. Pretty shortly we'll see uh an average shot time come up here and they'll be surprised if it's a lot more than 20 seconds. Yeah, I have to say he's one of the quickest and uh, most fluid players at this event. We were talking about this earlier, there's a, a, a lot of players at this uh, level, at amateur level, that seem to agonise over the shots and, and almost uh, get paralysed by indecision. Great shot there, stun off one cushion for the red, good angle, down for the blue. Real authority in that one. Comes around, has a look at the pocket. Oh, oh what incredible shot. Sure. And that's why he's one of the favourites at this event. I think I'd be betting against him getting his tour card back there. Certainly not. Safety shot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Yes. <laughs> you have to play safe there. Surely. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> I think that was a break of oh, 87. Oh,
considered by some to be unlucky. It's 13 short of a century. Yeah, 15.94 seconds. Now that's that's quick. Okay, he's playing an amateur. Uh, the ball's opened up. Uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, safety uh, battles going on there, but uh, that's quick by any measure. And uh, that can't be hurting his frame of mind either. He's uh, he's uh, feeling the love at this stage, liking what's happening. There's no stem, so that's it doesn't qualify as a shamrock. Okay. <laughs> okay. In fact, it's a propeller. It's TCS Marine. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a boat propeller. But you did get a little excited there for a while. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, deep in contemplation, sitting in the corner, staring into the middle distance, wondering what the hell have I got to do here? Yes. You may not have the answers. Yeah, there's a lot of players have ended this event uh, for the thrill of playing against these great players with, with no expectations. That's one of the great things about our game, I think, is that there are so many players who really appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, play uh, and, and, and get in matches against uh, some of the greats and some of the future greats. You know, those juniors, you know, there's two or three of those, and you look at them and you go, well, I think I might have played a future world champion. And you've got one in your group, uh, Dave in Young, Stan Moody. Absolutely. The 2023 junior champion. Now, does he get a tour card for winning those juniors? Yes, he, he does. does yes, he does. Yeah. 16 years of age from Halifax. So he's got a uh, he's got a spare ticket in his back pocket. Yes. I think that one was a little, little bit of what we call an Australia two bob each way. Shot to nothing. So I think he just played that to free up the black, but it didn't work. He's put it back <laughs> in the mix. I'm going to predict that Harvey's average shot time will stay below 20 for the entire match. Um, okay, that's a bold prediction. Below 20 is really motoring. And we haven't really seen any bouts of... Where's the cue ball going? Safety play. Where's the cue ball going? Oh God, I'm sitting next to John Virgo. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> well, we get very excited about things like that, Peter. <laughs> we, we do. We're both billiards players. And we want that cue ball to go in your pocket. Well, we play with the snooker as well. It's probably not Andrew's most flattering angle. Really. Deep screw back. Got a nice bit of juice on that one. He did. Well, these are slick tables. They're playing on super fine cloth. These are uh, uh, the two tables in the show arena here are in fact brand new uh, Shender tables. And um, the tables in the, um, in the existing billiard room uh, were refitted with uh, new cushions, with more cushions. But it's a super fine cloth and 30 out 6 8 double 1 on the bed. Not quite the same as the Pro Setup, which is um, Strawn's 10 on the bed of the tables. But this is a little more hard wearing for, for club use, so it's a bit of a compromise between playability and... playability and uh, longevity on the cloth durability. Good choice for a club after these uh, after this event's finished. Of course, this becomes um, back to being a working and active snooker club for the local members. Uh, we're in Mount 
uh, Mount Pritchard on the uh, southwestern outskirts of Sydney. Touching ball. Yes, the referee indicates that it's touching ball, which means that Harvey can simply play away to anywhere he wants. He's considered to have already hit a red. So we've got all the big wigs here this week too, Dave. We've got uh, Jason Ferguson, the worldwide uh, head of uh, snooker. Frank Jones, of course, president of uh, both the Australian Business and Snooker Council and the Asia Pacific Regional Federation. And yeah, we've got some uh, top class referees as well. Yes from what looks like 10 different countries. Oh, it's one of these situations where it can turn into a horrible frame, where all of the reds get pushed up the table. Yes. Sometimes you need to make a decision here. Do I want a frame like this to materialize? Well. I mean, if it can tuck behind the black, it's, uh, it's the right shot to play. You can here. That's all I could do. Actually, actually, there's, there's, it's pretty open if uh, if uh, Harvey can manage to nail something. Right, closest to the centre is on. Cue ball control is a little bit more problematic. It looks to me like it travels between green and brown. Just missed. It's just one of those openings, Peter, where you're left half a chance, and if you miss it, the opponent is left right in. Yep. Well, this is a golden opportunity for Andrew. We get to see what he can do here. Balls everywhere. bit straighter on this blue the cue ball will uh, be travelling a bit further than he wants. Needs to control it. Well, Does well. Andrew is a regular 50 plus breaker, so a chance yes, here he to do some damage. Yep. Played for the blue. Yeah. Can just see the angle, the potting angle of this yellow. Again, the cue ball will be uh, travelling. Mm, fortunate result for the colliding with the blue. Might have gone through. the digital presentation for this particular event can be quite daunting when you're playing a player who's miles ahead um, you might get stuck on a high break of 9 or 16 <laughs> just not it flashes up on the screen every few <laughs> seconds <laughs> whereas the other guy is on a 140 odd <laughs> well hang on they've got the same pot success rate 90 percent each well there you go yep take a screenshot of that mr samarja absolutely Safety success rate. Rather no. similar. Well, Andrew ahead on the stats, but not on the scoreboard. Okay. Hasn't left a gimme, but yes. the way this young man pots. One. 
it's just lovely control, isn't it? Doesn't waste any time at all, does he? No. And not bogged down with technique. Great technique, but not bogged down with it. And it's very natural. It's uh, free-flowing. It's mm. easy on the eye. angle on the green here to down the table. There's a choice of three or four reds just running along this line. He's got a ball no matter where he stops. I'd love to have the black back on the spot or the pink on the spot at this stage. spot there's a lot of balls around it. it's going to be crowded but he's a very precise player so he'll be able to work around that just a series of stone and screw shots now i think where yes. the cue ball won't be touching yeah. the the coaches yes. and, th and that's the difference really when you look at this standard you, you watched andrew play and the ball was traveling all over the table and that's that's what Amateurs look like this guy looks like a pro. The ball is travelling short distances, economy of effort. Stones across for the red to the opposite yes. middle pocket. Just looking at the line now to come down onto those two reds below the pink, so he wants to be slightly above the straight line into the corner. 53. The uh, pink available into all pockets. All four pockets now. He really looks the goods, doesn't he? Yeah, he's making uh, break buildings such as this but very easy. Yeah, very good team. I love the way he took the balls in a certain order to clear the path for one to open it up for the next. The speed of his thought process is comparable with uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan, I have to say. Yeah. There's very little exactly. double checking. There's very little walking around the table, and uh, doesn't bother to look at the angle of the pot, which uh, some of the top players do. Yes. When I say look at the angle of the pot, I'm talking about walking Line around, up. Yep. lining up a full ball shot before getting down to play the shot. Which to this day, Peter, I'm not sure is beneficial. <laughs> I say we'll have to have a shiniest shoes competition for these young players. They're all wearing these patent leather Mirrored shoes. Very stylish. Seems like a funny connection there. Yeah, these uh, players from overseas, they're putting us to shame, Peter. Yes. We're dressed like slobs here down under. <laughs> <laughs> what you wear down under is none of my business, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> to describe this guy, fluent. 
He's just very few. Well, the frame's not over yet. He's 42 ahead, 43 in the table. Easy yeah. shot. Yep. Is this the right angle to break out the rib, or does he just roll up behind it? Stun up behind it. Even better idea. It takes all the chances out of it. 64. Right hander, I'll fancy your pot this, Dave. Oh, yes. <laughs> I fancy your pot anything. <laughs> Well, I think we've seen, certainly seen one of the favourites for this end in action, and uh, this is the stand that uh, we're up against. Well, we were expecting to commentate on uh, young uh, Union Boyko, but... Uh, yes, his opponent, uh, Kai Wong from the USA, uh, didn't turn up, may not even be in the country. Kai hasn't played any matches, but uh, we're very excited that um, uh, young Union Boyko who's a Ukrainian player from Kiev and uh, has reported that he's, uh, as soon as he's old enough, he wants to join the army and fight the Russians. Mm. Which yeah. would be next year? Is it oh, 18 years of age? I think so, yeah. I mean, he, he, w he was saying that, um, uh, was Julian was saying that many of the Ukrainian sports stars, their soccer players, uh, the Klitschko, the boxer, have all signed yes. up for the Ukrainian army. And, uh, and Julian wants to go and That's right. do his patriotic duty as he sees it. Klitschko has gone full Rambo. Has full he really? Rambo. You're right, okay. But the football players, tennis players, they're, they're all uh, in the army now. So uh, two frames to nil. Uh, this has been barely going for 25 minutes. Yeah. And Andrew hasn't actually done a lot wrong until that moment. Well, it's the positional side of the game, isn't it, Peter? It's, it's just the oh, it's biggest difference of all. The ability to control the cue ball. It's precision on class. Yes. That's a beautiful shot. Delicate close up screw off the black. So the referee is uh, from Malaysia. Quite a personality. I met him up there uh, in October, Iskander. Very active on the organisational side. I admire your ability to remember names, Peter. It's nothing, Dave. It's that a good internet connection, I can remember most things. <laughs> so you're looking forward to playing Stan Moody? Absolutely. The question is, is he looking forward to playing me? <laughs> Very much so, <laughs> Is telling him that he has to, he has to face the <laughs> Irish team captain, <laughs> the sole representative. He reminds me a bit of um, young Joshua Lawrence, as a an English yes. player on the uh, Sydney circuit. Yes, free flowing. 
And a beard. And a beard. <laughs> Very similar image, actually. <laughs> it is. <laughs> And about the same age as well. Yes, 27. 27, yes. yeah. And this is the difference. This guy isn't agonizing about his technique at all. He just knows what he's doing on every shot. And he's not devoting any brain cells to having to think about grip and stance and those kind of things that a lot of the other players are fiddling with. He's opened those up very effectively and nicely here. He's playing his natural practice game. He is. It's just like a practice frame for Harvey. Now, he had a slight grimace there. Yeah, uh, it might not be straight enough here. It might be colliding with the reds. Not sure. No? Clear? What do you want? I don't know what the problem was. Maybe got a little too close. you got nothing to worry about, Harvey. Mm. Big margin for error here. If he just keeps coming up down that line for the next uh, couple of shots, he's got choices to lure all the balls off the cushion except for one. And being a right-hander, it's on the good side of the table for him. So uh, the clearance is on here. Well, I'm not so sure the top two reds are on, Peter. I think he was playing for the bottom red, and now well, he has to play for the... He can still take them in order. He, well, the bottom one clears the next, and so forth. But uh, they're all there. Fifty-six. And I wouldn't be betting against it. Fifty-seven. Now they're both on. Looking very routine now. Stun shot here. Yeah, did he come far enough? I think he did. He's got the other red to use to get down back down onto the black if he needs to, but just doesn't want to knock it to the side cushion. Well, Peter, this is an early cup of tea. It is an early cup of tea, Dave. For your, uh, I'm a cheesecake person myself. Well, you're not it's not like we've heard our, uh, heard our keep here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Andrew feels the same. He's been sitting in the chair. And probably doesn't feel he's got his money's worth either. But uh, how can you not enjoy watching these great players? Players. Now the pocket cuts, for those of you who are technically minded, are not quite as tight as the pro tables. Uh, the star tables are cut a little tighter than these. These are uh, to uh, a slightly easier template. The main difference between the templates that I've observed is where the slate starts to fall away, the fall of the pocket on the uh, star tables is much deeper inside the, inside the pocket opening and uh, so consequently acute angles are, are very difficult, pots along the rail especially. Uh, let's run on, let's run on, not what he wanted. I think he can cue that uh, red closest to the pink spot and then get to centre cube and then stun across for the black if he wants. So he's 80 mm. points ahead, 67 remaining. Yeah. So the question is will Will he clear up? Will he clear up or will Andrew come to the Return table? Return to the table. the shot he took on but uh, he just missed it and, he shot his hand. and there we go there we go thank you folks i hope we didn't annoy you too much and uh, thank you for watching this exciting